Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about isometric three-dimensional sketches. An isometric pictorial, isometric means equal measure. And they're going to talk here about equal or the edges converge at one point will appear as 100 degree angles or 30 degrees from the horizon. So what they're saying here <coughs> is that either 30 degrees from the horizon or, all right, 90 degree angles appear to be 120. That's one way to know it's a pictorial. Here's how I tell students to know the pictorial. You got a point, all right, it comes to a big V. You get this V. See the V? If you see that, that's isometric. Yesterday, everything at the bottom was flat, all right. <clears throat> if I were to draw a box as a oblique from yesterday, Right. then my drawing would look something like this. This is an oblique, be it whether it's cavalier or cabinet, this is an oblique drawing. Notice we have horizontal and vertical lines. In an isometric, I've got this V at the bottom here. All right, you have this V, and there's another V. All right. <clears throat> okay, here's an example of where they're showing us the width, the depth, and the height. Uh, if I was you guys, I would go ahead and make sure that I got that picture written down. Uh, I'd have a picture of this shown down, where we have the top, the front, and the right, the top, the left, and the front they're showing us. So as you turn an isometric, or as you have it looking at you, uh, this would be the sides. So, for example, if I have an isometric picture from earlier, uh, this right here is the top. This right here then would be the front. This right here would be the right side. And that would be the, th the three sides that you would see. <clears throat> Recommendations for how to select the front view. All right. We kind of talked about this earlier. First of all, First of all, put it in its most natural position. All right. Then, shows the best shape and characteristic contours. Make sure you're including the longest dimensions. Pick the ones with the fewest hidden lines. All right. The last one, forget about this last part because that sometimes confuses the freshman boys. Pick the position where it's most stable. How is it going to stand on its own? So here's an example of what they're calling to be the best front view, all right? Yes, it has the longest. If we sit it there, it's going to be stable. Uh, it's in its most natural position. Shows the best shape and characteristics. I see all the detail. I don't have, uh, it's got the longest dimensions. There are no hidden lines. If you look at this, there's no hidden lines. And it's very stable. It's not going to topple over. Okay, having said that, let's talk about how to make isometrics again using the box method. A good sketching requires a sense of proportion and the ability to estimate size, distance, angles, and other spatial relationships. Okay, the layout of the box will contain the isometric view using points and construction lines. Uh, I'm going to use the light red line is my construction lines as well. But as we go through here, we're going to construct the box. Step one is construct the box. And that's what they've done here. Uh, they're saying that it's one and a half wide, so they're going one and a half wide. They say it's one, two, three boxes down. It's one, two, three boxes down. And it is one, two, three, four, five, six boxes across. So they're going to go six boxes across. Now, one of the things I saw yesterday as we were working on this is you guys just didn't want to use the lines. If I didn't want you to use the lines on the graph paper, I just would have gave you a blank sheet of paper. Use the lines. From here now, I have everything I need to make the box. From here, I can go straight up. I'm going to go across. Here's across. All right, notice that I'm going to erase. You guys wouldn't erase. You would take a little more time, hopefully. Uh, but I'm going to try to be a little more specific here. See where this line intersects here? 
All right, I'm, I'm redrawing that line. Hopefully you guys wouldn't erase. I'm not supposed to erase, but I'm really good looking. So what we're going to do here now is where these two lines, I got these two lines intersect. I'm going to go using the line 45 degree angle. These two lines, I'm going to go across. Where these two lines, I'm going to go down. Now I've got the whole big box. All right, I've got the whole box. I'm switching slides. You're still staying with your drawing here, all right? So what they're showing us now is this is the box that we just had drawn. So you guys don't redraw it. You've already got that part done. Now I'm going to show you how to draw in this part here, all right? Use points and construction lines to identify corners and edges of object faces that occur on the box surface. Well, there's one, two, three boxes over. One, two, three boxes over. So there's going to be point. It goes across there. So I'm going to go across there. This is up one and a half. One and a half. One and a half. I'm going to go across there. Well, the next part's easy. I just connect my lines. <coughs> Now we're almost virtually done, all right, with this. The next step, all right, I'm switching slides. Now they're going to tell us, all they're telling us is to take the drawing we just had and to put in the object lines. So if I were to come in here now and heavily darken in everything, and I'm doing it kind of quickly, you guys would take, you know, a little bit more time to get it done, a little bit more neater. And as you look at this, you can't even hardly see the ob or the, the, the lines we did have. All right. So there's the drawing I did. There's the drawing that their computer did. Inside faces. In this case, there are no inside faces. Tonal shading. They want us to add shading. Imagine where the light would be. Well, if the light's over here and the light's shining, these are going to be brighter spots than this over here. So I might come in here then. and add some total shading to this means I'm going to add make this look a little bit darker over here and then I might because the lights not going to quite hit this as much as it would this top I might come through here and add a few lines here on top but not as many so that this one here is definitely my darker side and this right here appears to be a little bit darker than the top but not as dark as the other side All right, we're going to go ahead and make this box now. Again, they tell us it's three units wide. One, two, three units. It's two units tall, and it's two units deep. So now it's just a matter of making the whole box. There's my whole box. All right. Now I'm going to start working on these outside faces. This one, that one, that one, and that one. This face is, is right here. It's one box. This right here is one box. Uh, on top, I've got these two. These are the outside faces. Um, this goes back a box. That goes back a box. Got a flat line there, flat line there. This goes back. I'm going to go back. That goes down. That goes across. There there so now I've got oh this goes down one down one over one down one down one over one this goes over two this goes over two so this one goes over two and then that goes up well as we look at this the only thing it's missing here is that one right there now things that we would go through here and do And get rid of that line and get rid of that line and all of a sudden it looks a lot better theirs is what theirs look like not a lot different uh, the only thing I haven't done yet on mine as I try to get back to it is I need to come through here with my bold lines and make my object lines and again I'm being really quick because I don't want the notes to take 55 minutes. 
Otherwise, I'd spend some more time trying to make this look neater. But there it is. So there's that one. There's theirs. You can see there's not much difference. I'll catch you guys on the